Catherine Harridge, thank you for your excellent reporting on that. I'm sure we'll hear a lot from you the rest of the day. Bill Hemmer, I want to ask you, moving from what this means for the investigation, what this means for Michael Flynn, what does this mean for Donald Trump yeah. and the White House? Uh, great question. I can't answer it. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't think anyone here is. I, th I think Ty Cobb's statement is interesting. Right. Uh, he is suggesting it's a very isolated matter. I think what Catherine reports on the anguish that Mike Flynn mm, has gone through for the past 11 months, one could argue, is that I, I think a prosecutor would take his evidence and say, we flipped him. And we'll see what the White House has to say with the defense about that later today. But if you're building a case from a prosecutor's standpoint, this is, this is where you stack things up. But what, what, where it goes, I've got no idea, and none of us do. Yeah. I, what confuses me is it is not a crime to speak with the Russians. It's a crime to lie to the FBI that you spoke to the Russians, and it's still not clear to me as just a regular citizen how unusual it is to have these conversations um, with foreign governments, which I, I think happens all the time. And the other thing I would point out is the only crime we actually do know of is the unmasking of Flynn, which was a crime. Lisa? Well, now we know lying the FBI is Well, and that too. as well, yes, but aside well, and, from that. And I would just ask this, because, Lisa, you and I were talking in the green room uh, before. Uh, when you say met with Russians for the transition team is one thing, but if it was talked about the exact U.N. vote sanctions that we were trying to put forth with regard to Russia, and then there was talk about policy with regard to Israel, there are four things that he's purported to have lied about that he said today, I am guilty of that. Right. Um, and, and so I would want to know legally the texture of those things. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm interested in this as well. And John Roberts and Catherine Harridge sort of touch it, touched on it as well. And I think kind of uh, we're, we're sort of questioning the same thing that we're questioning in the sense of clearly we know that transitions teams talk to foreign governments. So at issue is what were those conversations and were any laws broken in those conversations? Catherine had mentioned, uh, you know, depending on how you, you look at it, obviously Democrats are going to look at it on the collusion front. Uh, but I, I think we're going to learn a lot more about the nature of those conversations in the coming days. And I, I, that is where I'm interested uh, in learning more about, because we know that transition teams do have these conversations mm -hmm. with foreign governments, and that's not an illegal thing. And actually, uh, it's something that every transition team right. uh, does. And another uh, issue here as well is Flynn had put in the statement, he talked about, this is the best thing for my family. We know that his son was also caught up in this as well. And so I wonder what scrutiny is being placed on his son, and if that was the impetus and part of the reason as well. Uh, that he came around and wanting to work with Robert Mueller. Every time we have a transition of power in the United States, when one administration is replacing the other, we can see the pattern that they have. They want to have better relations with Russia. Right. Time and again, I don't think the Trump team was any different. And, and I know for a fact that General Flynn went to the West Wing as national security advisor. And part of his strategy was to build a better relationship with Moscow so you peel Moscow away from its relationship with Beijing. And that was a strategy that was stated on record in the West Wing last January. So why did he uh, lie about those meetings then? Well, you're going to have to ask them. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, it's, what you're saying is absolutely those are the facts, but then also but, the what, fact what, is that what, he admits lying. What, so What I'm arguing is that this was part of the Trump policy to build the relationship with sure. Moscow and see if you and can previous build administrations and forge a better well. relationship. But does anyone yeah. else, I wonder how this is going to play with a jury as well, because we know how much credibility does Flynn have? I mean, he's lied about everything well, under Dershowitz the sun. Dershowitz says right. none. He's lied about, he well, says exactly. you put him on the so, stand and, and one side will say, this is a guy who can't tell the truth about anything. And then the other side will say, well, he tells the truth about some things. So is it smart of Mueller to reach some sort of plea deal with him, considering the fact that he's not a very credible source? I don't, I don't know he's that the goal about is to put him under the, the sun. I yeah. think the goal is to try to squeeze him just like they did Paul Manafort. And, but is that information reliable? Campaign. And, you know, they do a, a no-knock door raid on him, and they just apply pressure. And, and then this investigation spends all sorts of money and can go in any direction it wants right. uh, as it applies pressure.